everybody. Welcome to the Switch Grocery Tasting Show. Uh, I'm so excited to be here tonight. You might be able <laughs> to hear my son screaming upstairs and he's not having a good night. So I, I mean, I don't apologize because that's just life. Um, but I think they closed the door now. So you may, it, you may not hear it, but welcome. Welcome to the Switch Grocery Tasting Show. Uh, I'm so excited. Hi, Mel. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Jess. Um, it's so nice to see you guys. Uh, welcome. We are live on Instagram. We have two cameras. Uh, we're live on Instagram. We are live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We are live in our Facebook group, The Switchers. If you haven't joined, please join. Um, if you're a customer, we're also live on Twitter and we're live on our LinkedIn business page, Switch Grocery. So we are live in so many places. Jess, it's so nice to see you. Um, and tonight's episode is pretty special. I have done a massive prep for this. And when, when I talk about massive, I'll try to show you what I've done. Okay, so let me, sh let me show you what I've done. We're going to be taste testing and trying all these new spices. So I will show you. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I will break them. Oh, I don't know if you can see but these are all of the burlap and barrel spices organized. Like here, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> and let's rotate that. These are all of the spices organized by type. Um, and I'm really, I'm really, really excited. So if you're anything like me, I think I pinned a comment. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Susan. I think I pinned a comment. Um, if you can share with me um, on Instagram, whether you can see my pinned comment. Oh, there. There it is. I see it. Um, perfect. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see everything. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Ashley. Okay, so tonight is about spices and salt. Hi. Um, and we are talking about like basically the inspiration for this show came for, came to me from being someone, we have a team, we have Sophia on our team who is vegan and I follow a low carb lifestyle to uh, manage my diabetes. And we both talked about how much, however you eat, whatever you eat, <laughs> flavor is so important. And, you know, she tells me a lot, like she tried all the burlap and barrel spices and the salts that I'm going to shoot tonight, and she was just like, they add so much flavor. They have changed her game. Do you love how I'm like, my dad used to like put a pen here. <laughs> so that's kind of what I had before the show, and Brian told me to change that. Um, but yeah, like she basically said to me that she really misses flavor in her food. And I said the same thing. I was like, I really miss flavor in my food sometimes. And, you know, this was, Sophia started with us. Oh my gosh, two years ago. So this is when we went on the search for spices and salts. And that's how we came across burlap and barrel. So I think that was the main thing of saying that food doesn't have to be boring. And I am a spice baby. Um, you will owe me massively tonight because I'm actually going to try spices. Uh, like the spicy ones. Spicy spices. Because not all spices, obviously. So not all spices are spicy. They add flavor to our food. But there are some spices that are spicy, which Kathy... Uh, can vouch for who is live with us on Instagram. She can handle the heat. She's always like, bring the heat on. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do tonight. And you know, with burlap and barrel, the reason that they're so, the spices are so delicious is because they are actually single origin. The founders just came back from Vietnam <laughs> and uh, Vietnam is where they source their royal cinnamon, which is what I'm going to show you. Um, and so that's sort of, uh, you know, why these spices are so good, because they're sourced from third, fourth, fifth generation farmers whose like parents, grandparents, like all of these, uh, you know, the family, that's all they did. And that's all they learned how to do was grow spices. Um, and it's so amazing that that is like tradition that's carried on and that's who they burlap and barrel sources from. So I sorted all of their spices. If you haven't checked out burlap and barrel, they're on our site. Um, I believe we're the only Canadian retailer that carries them and we're just so excited to carry their spices. Um, 
And <laughs> I'm gonna, so throughout the show, I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples of how I, uh, of how I use these spices. So we're going to make, like, you guys, this is serious. I have made notes and come because I'm like, I need to, I know that I get overwhelmed with spices and I wanna be able to show you how I use them. So I've divided them into a few. We have the sweet spices, uh, the salty chili spices. We have Chef Floyd's masalas, which are spices, masalas, which are Indian spices, blends. We have um, things that go well with avocado. Uh, we're gonna walk through a taco recipe. And then we have obviously barbecue seasoned spices. Um, we also then have the three salts. So we carry Redmond salt, origin vanilla. We also carry Vancouver Island. Um, and I'll try those with crackers also. So that's how the show is gonna go. And we're gonna make, we might try to make some paneer. We're just gonna see how it goes, but I'm definitely going to give you and show you um, a bunch of examples of how I do. Usually people ask how I'm doing. <laughs> um, and I would love to know how you're doing. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you're doing in the comments. Um, I'm doing really good right now. Like I went to Sudbury last weekend, which is why there wasn't a show uh, last week. Cause I went, I went to Sudbury for a live meetup um, one and a half weekends back and I flew to Sudbury, which was so nice, uh, by myself. I slept in a bed by myself. You might know I have a toddler and a, and a little fur baby and, um, uh, my partner. So like when we, <laughs> it's, a, it's a busy bed, but my toddler's in his own room, but like the, the dog's definitely with us. Lucy sleeps on my feet. So it was nice to have my bed all to myself. And I, we had a really good time. Um, we had like amazing questions at our Sudbury event. I got to interview Brie, um, Sugar Free Brie, who's on our team. We uh, had, we just, it basically turned into a Q&A and it was just like a wonderful event to actually see people face to face. Um, and I just was, my cup was so full with that. And so that's where I am. I'm still kind of carrying that through and I just, um, it's been really nice to see people in person. Um, Heather says she is a cat. So Heather, I don't know if your cat sleeps in bed with you, but I've heard that cats don't even sleep uh, at night. Like, so that's, I feel bad for you if your cat wakes up at night. Like some of my friends, their cats wake up at night, but they say it's not, they're just used to it. Um, okay, so first we're gonna start with making my decaf coffee. Um, oh. It was the best day, amazing ladies. I loved every moment, yay! And it was a great event, look forward to more. Yes, we got so many questions after like, when are you coming to my city and when are you coming to my city? And I would love to do that. Um, we're gonna start with burlap and barrels sweet spices. So we have, we actually have four sweet, sweet spices. We have the royal cinnamon. Um, you can get a small one or a large one. We have the Morogoro uh, Moro, um, cacao, which is actually like delicious cacao powder. This is sourced from Tanzania. We have saffron threads, um, and you may know that saffron um, can definitely be slightly, it's uh, especially like quality saffron um, is pricey. And so that's why it comes in this and a little bit goes a really long way. Um, and then we have cardamom, which I don't have because I actually <laughs> finished it. I should have some cardamom. Let me see what I can find. Um, if you, let me see if I can find it. I don't have cardamom. Okay. No, I have coriander. That would not be good. Yes. I have cloud forest cardamom seeds. This is just a sample, but we sell cardamom. So these are sort of our sweet spices. And what you can really do to use them every day, especially the cinnamon, it's the cinnamon is, I checked our best sellers and the cinnamon is like all around our best seller. Um, and I, what I do is I blend it in my coffee. So let me show you how to do it. Um, I've made a decaf cup of coffee, yummy. And I'm going to put in some cream. Yes. I'm back to some dairy. So I put in a little bit of cream. And then what I do is if you have an espresso frother, uh, then you will love this. I know that's a lot of cream, but treat yourself, right? And so what I do 
is in the Nespresso frother itself, where I froth my nut milk, or I froth, what I do is I take the cinnamon. Now the cinnamon can leak. So I'll take, this is a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, and I put it in the, that's a lot of cinnamon, but hey, you live once. I put in some cardamom, because again, why not? Cardamom's really strong. This is the cacao powder. Like it comes with a little, it's so, like look at that chocolate. This is what chocolate's made of it, right? And so I'll put some in. I love like putting this on top of my coffee. And then I'm not gonna put in the saffron, but I, I actually could. So I'm gonna go put this and froth it. And I would say this is the easiest way to use your spices, especially your sweet spices. You can put them literally in your coffee, your tea, anything you'd like. And uh, oh, Heather says, is the window beside the bed? Um, in the window beside the bed. Okay, so her, her cat is not sleeping. Uh, is sleeping in the window beside the bed. So hopefully that's not waking you up, Heather. Because my little Lucy, even though she's only 10 pounds, she likes to push up against me and it definitely, <laughs> it definitely wakes me up at night. But that's okay, right? That's, we love them. They're for babies. Um, okay, so I'm going to put these back. And I'm going to show you how my coffee turns out. This is so good. Okay, if you could smell this, like this is how, oh my goodness. Like, I will bend this down. Hi, <laughs> sorry. This is what it looks like. It's so frothy and delicious. And I always make my lattes this way. Um, I definitely just use the Nespresso frother because I think that's the most convenient. Um, sometimes I might put it in the blender, but this time I really don't need to. So I'm gonna pour this all over my um, coffee. I'll stir it up and let me taste it. Oh my goodness, I can already smell this. It is so good. It smells so good. Here, And you can see my cup. There's my cup of coffee with cinnamon, cacao, and a little bit of cardamom. And I'm going to taste it. Yeah. Okay. Like, wow. This is, this is so delicious. The cardamom is pretty strong. So if you're not a cardamom person, I would skip that, but if you just want to even try this with the royal cinnamon, some of our customers tell us they don't even need um, any sugar. Um, I feel like a little bit of sweetener right now, so I'm going to put in, I'll put in a couple of drops of sweet monk. I like to do that, especially for a nightly treat, as I'm going to be trying a bunch of my spices. So here we go. Should put in way more than a drop. So let me that out there we go mm. so nice that little touch of sweetness i put in a few many drops but just a couple of drops two to three drops yum 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 um my cat weighs more than your dog he weighs 16 pounds well you know what yeah like i guess your cat would be i think a lot of cats would be more than loose would be bigger than lucy we had a cat once, we, we found it on the street and brought it in the house and put it in our bathroom. And um, because we had to hide the cat in the bathroom so because she was trying to get at Lucy and Lucy was trying to get at her. Um, but it was snowing outside and we found out later that uh, the owners had a pet sitter at their house, but she, the cat escaped. And luckily she had, uh, I think I think a scanner so we took her to the vet and we found the scanner and then the vet kept her and then they returned them to the family. Um, so it was a good story. But that was the time where we almost got a cat because basically I opened the door and Brian, my husband was at the door and he's like, I'm not leaving this cat outside, like at all. Um, he is part Maine Coon. Um, Maine Coon. I don't know how to pronounce, am I pronouncing that right? Um, I wish I knew cat breeds because that sounds, he sounds like a super sweet cat. Okay, um, we're, sorry, so I was drinking my coffee. Um, anyone else keep their cupboards open like that? 
Okay. So our next round up spices are our, so that's all the sweet. We also, sorry, we also have all spice berries. Uh, we have nutmeg. So those are more around the fall for holidays. But if you like nutmeg and allspice, we have those. So those are, um, the other examples that I use is if you make keto chow shakes, if you make chia puddings, if you make iced coffees, those are all uh, things that I would add the royal cinnamon to. I would add cardamom. I would add um the cacao powder too, like delicious, but definitely, ooh, I'll show you one other thing I do. I sprinkle some cacao. Here's the cacao. I sprinkle it a little bit on top of my coffee and it's so good. Like that touch sprinkle in the morning just like makes me so happy. If you're joining us now, welcome. We are live taste testing burlap marrow spices. Um, and we've done the sweet ones, and now we're gonna go to the salty ones. So we're doing garlic. So let's let's pull them out. We're doing garlic, Urfa chili, sun-dried tomato, cobanero chili, and Zanzibar black peppercorn. So I'll bring all of those out now. You might have to love me. You might have to love me a little bit extra because. I'm gonna try some spicy ones for you because I guess I love you guys. Like the things you do for your company, right? I'm gonna try some spicy, spicy ones. So I have to taste test them. I'll tell you what I would do with each and every one of them as we go. One second, I'm gonna set you guys up so you can see the spices. And you can see me here are all the spices <laughs> so here are all the spices and here what we have is our most our second most popular one is garlic if you've not tried purple striped garlic there is no garlic that tastes powder that i've come across that actually tastes like garlic this is also from vietnam sourced from vietnam it's so good like i dump it on my food and i know you're not supposed to because they're like it's potent but I just love garlic. <laughs> I smell like garlic at night, Brian says sometimes. Um, I'm like one of my friends who's actually, uh, one of my best friends, her husband is Lebanese and he just like loves his garlic. He's always like, he's, her, she always says that at night I can like smell the garlic and so I love the garlic. <laughs> um, I'm kind of like that, but not Lebanese. So <clears throat> I kind of um, really identify with what he, with his love of garlic. We also have um, the Zanzibar black peppercorns. This is our friend, Oscar. I have diabetes favorite. Hi, Kim. Um, can you guys hear me properly on Instagram? Please let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me or send me a heart um, because I want to make sure that you can hear me. We then have um, sun-dried tomato. We have silk chili, cobanero chili. So we have three different types of chilies. Um, to taste test all the spices, I have crackers. These are legit bread, dairy-free cheese crackers. Um, I believe they're on sale on our store. And I'm going to take a cracker, cut it in half because I'm trying a lot of spices. I'm going to put some butter on it because I believe that this is like the best vessel <laughs> to try the spices. And then I will put this on. So the first one I would say is... Um, and uh, the third most popular spice on our site is the black peppercorn. Like if you are a, this is the Zanzibar black peppercorns. If you're a fan of quality black pepper, um, this is what it looks like. Just look at that. If you could smell it. If you could smell this. Wow. Like just, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Um, hi, Danielle. We're, we're taste testing spices um, and I'm trying to not sneeze. So this is what I put the black pepper corn in here and that's basically what I do. So, I mean, wow. I don't know how to describe the black pepper corn as, as, except if you love black pepper you will love the black peppercorn. Like 
Oscar always tells us his partner, Denis, like asks for it. Like he's never gone back to another black pepper, which reminds me I should, <clears throat> it was his birthday and I should send him some, but it is like, it's so Ori, the founder of Orlap always says the spices are so beautiful and I don't know how else to describe it, but if you love black pepper, you will love it. I'm going to try the garlic. So let me show you what the garlic looks like. Again, it, they, you have to be careful when you open the lid because they fly. That's what the garlic looks like, if you can smell it. And then I kind of try to use a spoon because otherwise it'll really, really come out um, everywhere. But yes, like it's so, so so good. If you're joining us now, I see a lot of people coming in on Instagram. We're taste testing the burlap and barrel spices. Okay. I'm excited about this one. So this is the garlic. I put it with butter. If you make a pizza, putting the garlic on top, like on top of the cheese after it comes out, like so good. Mmm. It almost tastes like real garlic, which is so, so delicious. Um, that is garlic powder. Like, that is garlic powder. Mm. It's so good. I can't even tell you how good this tastes. So the garlic and the black peppercorn... Sometimes, like this, I would put on anything. I would put on stir-fry vegetables. I would put on baking. If you bake anything, I would throw it in and mix it up. Mix it up. I have thrown this literally on meats. Like, it's so good on meat. So the garlic is super versatile, and the black peppercorn goes on everything. You can even, like, push it into a steak if you like. And now I'm going to try the sun-dried tomato powder. This is one that we launched last year for the summer. People love sun-dried tomato. Man, are you guys getting hungry? So this is the sun-dried tomato powder, and this is what it looks like. I'll smell it. It smells actually like exactly like sun-dried tomato. Howdy, it's me, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Just got my order, and I haven't forgotten about my review. Thank you. Don't even... Worry about it, Kelly. I'm so glad you got your order. Um, <laughs> I'm really glad you got your order. And don't worry. And whenever you get time. So I have right now, I'm trying, I'll try the sun-dried tomato first. Again, it's just a little bit of these dairy-free crackers. And then I'm going to put a little bit of sun-dried tomato on top. I should really get a small spoon that goes in. Brian always tells me to do that, and I don't. But here you go. So these are the sun-dried tomatoes. Yum! Uh, whoa. Okay. So I have my cracker with my sun-dried tom tomato powder. Mmm. Mmm! All right. If you like sun-dried tomato, this is so nice. Saute the powder with onions and garlics or use like a as a garnish on roasted vegetables. Add to rubs for grilled meats. So if you're ever intimidated by these, the description on the back, like it gives you specific ideas on what to do with them, which is so, so helpful. Like cobanero ch chili, um, is a rare Maya variety of chili, chili pepper, only grown in the mountains around the city of Coban in Guatemala. It has a lush, fruity aroma and a fierce, smoky heat that makes everything taste better, perfect for anyone who appreciates the true chili flavor. And what I learned from Burlap was like the farmers help draft these descriptions, which, you know, who better than to draft a description than the person who grows it? Um, your customer service was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Kelly Lynn, we like, <laughs> we like super pride ourselves on that. We 
meet every Monday and we go through everything kind of in our customer service, our email and our DMs and um, on our email specifically and our Facebook Messenger. And we really try, <laughs> really try to make sure that, um, you know, nobody has a complaint ever on purpose and something just genuinely has gone wrong and we really, really try to fix it. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, great with sour cream and mayonnaise to, to make a dip, add spices. Yes. Like that would be, that sounds amazing. Are you saying that for the cobanero or are you saying that for the sun-dried tomato? You're making me hungry. <laughs> I know. I don't know how every, every Tuesday after I do this live, I'm like, I need to go for a walk because there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that I have eaten. And I'm like, I should probably go for a walk, especially to get my blood sugar down. <laughs> but usually because of the things I eat, my blood sugar does not go up. And I kind of just compensate for it by eating a lighter dinner. So this is, I'm doing all of you a favor. Like, that's what I say. Um, honest to goodness, if any of you are on the fence to place an order, please do. They're awesome. Oh my gosh, Kelly Lynn, you're going to make me cry. That's so so kind. Um, I was having a really rough day a couple like this past weekend, and I walked to the, the Dundas Street Festival um, in Toronto, and <laughs> I was just walking, and someone actually walked by and said, "Yay, switch grocery!" And you guys, I was like, literally, my hair was in a bun. I was wearing like my workout shorts. I didn't have any switch grocery T-shirt on. And when she said that, I just like my my brother was like, "Who is?" who's that? And, and I was like, I don't know. Like, I wish I could go back, but she'd walked by already, but it made my day. And so Kelly Lynn, like, I can't tell you, you know, for every, like, it really makes someone's day. Like when you say that, when you're tough, when you're giving a compliment to literally anybody, it really makes their day. Um, and there's a lot of construction going on outside our place. And there was this guy standing in the rain and I just walked by him and I stopped the car, rolled down the window. And I said, are you okay? You're literally in the pouring rain. And he looked at me and he goes, thank you so much for stopping. No one has stopped to ask me that, but I'm okay. This is part of my job. And I just felt so sad because I'm just like, I think the pandemic made us so much insular, like so, so much more insular. Like we used to ask each other questions or like, how are you doing? You're like walking on the street. We would stop to ask somebody, but I think, it definitely made me a little bit more insular. I just forget to ask people or forget to check in on people because it's been two years. I was like, so I don't check in on people sometimes. So I'm trying to do that a lot more. And I hope that you can too, because I think if there's anything we can do, like Kelly Lynn saying that if you're on the fence to order to place an order with Switch, like that's so kind. And um, I'm going to pass that favor on to someone else. And I hope if everyone on this live, which is like 15 people, we all go out and do some kind things. It is going to change the world. That is what I believe. <laughs> um, back to dry spices. <laughs> um, we uh, both add a bit of garlic too. Yes. Oh, I like that. So definitely like the idea to make dips. Um, when I think dips just like add chili, add some tomato, tomato powder, add garlic. Um, we as humans are so fast to complain, yet never praise others. We need to praise kindness. Kelly Lynn, I need to quote you, and I can't take a screenshot, but I'm going to take, like, screenshots. Um, not of your name, but I'm just going to, like, take screenshots of your kindness and just put that out in the world. Um, okay, so we have three chilies. Um, I'm actually uh, procrastinating right now because I need to actually try chilies. And I'm a spice baby, and this is how you know how much I love my company, okay? So if you are a spice sort of lover and want to try something that could make your life flavorful, pick up the black Urfa chili. There's three chilies on our site. I'm going to walk you through three of them. Black Urfa chili, it's so unique. It has, like, more of an umami flavor. Um, it's, like, good in – it's a little tart. It's from Turkey, which I knew. And, ooh, I like this. It's great in stews, tomato sauce, salad dressings, brownies, and other desserts, or sprinkled over fluffy scrambled eggs. So I'm going to try it. So what we do, this is so beautiful. 
we actually, for all the chilies, put in some olive oil at the end. And then we have this like chili infused olive oil. So we always do that when our spices are getting low. So I'm gonna put on the Urfa chili flavored olive oil, like a couple of drops up on what I've got. Yummy. Um, Kim says your positivity is contagious. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, you know, I really try. I try my best. Um, I'm not positive, I would say, like, but I really try to express my feelings. <laughs> um, my uh, friends say that they wish they could express their feelings in the way I do. So I think that that's a privilege that I can. Um, Mark just joined. Mark loves Cobanero chili. Actually, that I told you about the Urfa. It's more flavorful. The next up is the silk chili. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to try all these. Um, okay, so this is the Aleppo pepper. Um, using any dish in need of a little excitement, from scrambled eggs to burgers to brownies, perfect for cooking and finishing. So the chili, like when you know it comes like that, you know it's strong. So I'll just put a little bit on this cracker. I really like the silk chili. And then the last one, bring the heat. So this is for like our customers, Kathy and Mark, anybody like them, they love the Cobanero chili. This is the heat. This is what's bringing the heat. So this is um, <laughs> literally is no instructions except perfect for anyone who appreciates true chili flavor. So you know it's bringing the heat. And this is like I'm saying actual chili flakes. So let me show you. Like that's what it looks like, the Cobanero chili. <laughs> Mark's like Cobanero is the best. Mark, I'm trying Cobanero. Like who am I? And then Mark and Kathy are both like, oh, yes, that one is so good. Okay, so I'm going to go with the baby spice. I'm going to go with the Urfa chili. Okay. Wow, that is so good. Um, it's kind of tart, tangy. It's a different spice, and I really, really love the olive oil infused. So definitely, whether it's for burlap or barrel, or do you have, like, um, any other chili, definitely when the bottle is like barely any left, put in some olive oil and that is going to be amazing. Hey, Nikki, Nikki just joined. Okay. So this is, we're doing, we're doing the silk chili, which is a middle one. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Silk chili is like, that's like a, tr oh my gosh, it's really good. I would say it's still milder compared to like chili chili. Um, and that's why I'm okay with it because the cracker, but you can feel, you can feel a little burn in your throat. I used to not be able to handle any spice. And then during pregnancy, pregnancy has done lots of things to me, like not being able to handle gluten, but you guys, I can now handle spicy food. And what's also crazy is my background is Southeast Asian, so I'm Indian. Um, and my husband is fourth, gener fourth generational English. He's white. So when we go to a restaurant, everyone like looks at us and they're like spicy, non-spicy. And <laughs> they always look at me like assuming that I will handle the spice and like the dish is mild for Brian, but actually Brian can handle the spice and the dish is mild for me. So there's the other thing of stereotypes don't come true. And that's why there's no point in believing stereotypes because my brother and I have actually been to a barbecue and thrown away food. Like we've hidden, gone to the corner and the sausages were too spicy for us. So we like said, thank you. And we actually like found a garbage and put them in the garbage because they were too spicy for us. But everyone assumed that we would want the chili sausages. <laughs> So, and we both were like, mm -hmm, this is too spicy for us. We actually wanted the mild sausages, but you gave them to the other people. So cool. So anyway, stereotypes, right? Um, we definitely need to watch the replay. Was really wanting to check this one out. Love the spices. Yay. Um, okay. So to back it up, we actually did the sweet spices first. So we did the um, royal cinnamon, cardamom, cacao, and the saffron. And I made a coffee uh, with them in the Nespresso. So if you like coffee, go back and watch that. 
Um, but otherwise, all we've done is tasted, we're taking crackers and with a little bit of butter and we've been tasting the garlic, black peppercorn, and I'm doing the chilies now. So hopefully that catches you up. Um, and there's a lot more ahead. Um, we're going to be doing, actually, we're, we're going to make paneer, which I'm really excited about, which is you can make chicken or meat, but I'm going to make that next. Um, hey, I'm a bit like this one. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Don't worry. I covered everything um, for you. Okay, so I've been, again, procrastinating because I don't want to try Cobanero chili. But here's the Cobanero chili. Oh, Mark, Kathy, this is for you. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. This one's spicy. I don't know if water helps. <laughs> I think I can taste the spice way more drinking water. Maybe I'll try drinking my cacao and sweet coffee. The things I do for you guys, like I think you should honestly just like I think you should pay me. Like, I think you guys should send me, like, for every show, like, if I try something, you should send me, like, a box of yogurt or something. <laughs> not a box of yogurt. Maybe a Starbucks or not Starbucks. But basically, like, anything that if I'm taking the hit for you, like, something to offset that, like, yogurt, I think, would have been good right now. Whoo! That's hitting my throat. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so... Okay, so that was all of the chili. So actually, that was the, with crackers and butter, we tried the garlic, herb chili, sun-dried tomato, cubanero chili. Um, and those are amazing to cook with, anything, or they're also just good to have with crackers. Like I told you, I'm gonna put them away and we're gonna now talk about making paneer, you guys. We're gonna make paneer, which is, literally amazing okay second oh this is why i had this i'm supposed to actually pick this up now we have chef floyd spices um chef floyd spices i'm missing one Ooh, which one am i missing green tikka um chef floyd spices are very 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 popular um, Chef Floyd was, Chef Cardos Floyd was a, Floyd Cardos, um, was a um, world-renowned chef. He had two restaurants. He unfortunately passed away in March 2020. Now I'm going to start crying. I'm not going to start crying. Um, of um, COVID and his legacy, his wife, his two sons, um, they released the spice blends, which were his recipes um, in collaboration with Burlap and Barrel. And, you know, uh, these spices are like loved by celebrities because I think there's a lot of celebrities that dined at his restaurants. Um, but more than that, it's just come out. I, I'm sure everyone knew this in his life, but he was just such a warm and loving person. And you can kind of like feel, you can definitely feel his love. So we actually have a six, um, six pack bundle, which is Chef Floyd Cardos. Um, actually a writer from Globe and Mail reached out to us. Um, and she told us to launch them. We couldn't launch them in Canada for quite a while because the family had to give permission for us to do that um, or it had to expand. Like I think first the distribution was only in the U.S. and then, um, then it grew. So yeah, so we got them the minute we could and we're so happy that we have them in Canada. Some people come just for that and they ask to make a bundle. So you can get a bundle of six with all six of Chef Floyd Cardosa's um, of spices. Hubby's name is Floyd. Very cool. I'll order them all. Oh my gosh. Uh, you can also order the ones you like. Um, Kim, we are doing a spice seasoning salt sale. And I think the code, the code is the best spices and the sale is on until next Friday. So definitely if you're going to place an order from the spices, use that code. Um, and that would be hopefully helpful. Okay. So chef, Floyd's masalas. Um, I have the Goin masala. I've got the green tikka masala. I've got the chaat masala. I've got vindaloo and I've got garam masala. So all of them again have clear descriptions on the back of what to do with them. These are the only spices from the whole burlap and barrel collection that are blends. And what that means is that they're blends of spices. So for example, 
like the ingredients should say this, but the chaat masala is a blend of the black peppercorn, Kashmiri chili, cumin, ginger, coriander, fennel, adwin, mint, black salt, amchur, tamarind, and hink, which are all spices sourced by Borla. Um, and then the green tikka is garlic, black pepper, cumin, curry leaves, ginger, cobanero chili. So Mark, you would like this one. Um, and usually people, you know, if you've ordered Indian food before, you would know like the green tikka masala because usually you can order green tikka at a restaurant. I think you'd know chaat masala because you can order chaat. Um, you would know vindaloo because you can order vindaloo. Um, garam masala is a finishing spice. And then the goan masala, if you don't know it, is like delicious in curries, like in curries, which I love. Um, okay, so let me show you how I'm going to make something so quick for you, you're going to be like in shock because you're going to be like, it, can you make this that quickly? And I can. And I didn't even prep for it. So that's how you know I can. Um, I have I have paneer, which I don't know if you guys have tried, but it's a kind of cheese where you actually, um, I'm trying to think of how to explain paneer. Um, the macros in this are per a four centimeter cube, 55 grams, it's 150 calories, 10 grams of fat, two grams of carbs, 13 grams of protein. So it has a really great um, nutritional profile. Have you tried paneer? Give me a, give me a hi if you've tried paneer. And I love Jasmine's Kitchen Masala Spices from you last year. So I'll definitely need to give these going. Absolutely. The Jasmine's Kitchen Spices are also a blend. Um, and really the only difference with, with uh, those would be the names. So Jasmine's is the Tadka, which is a uh, 17 spice blend, the tandoori, and the garam. So those are the three on the right, right, the salt. So they're just different spices. Um, and then also where they're sourced from. So I'm, I should have probably cut the paneer. Um, obviously I did not do that, <laughs> but you know what? We'll just chat as I cut, but I really wanted to show you how easy it is to make this because the main thing that people get intimidated by is how to use the, um, how to use some of the spices. I didn't honestly, cooking intimidates me. Brian is way better at this. Um, but reading the descriptions, I know enough to kind of get by. Um, and this, what I'm doing right now is if you want to make like a little curry or masala dish at home, it's called masala. What you would do is um, if you eat dairy, you take your meat or you take your paneer, um, or if you're vegan, you take your tofu. You put that in a marinade. So you're gonna put, you're gonna make a marinade with yogurt or coconut cream. Again, you have a dairy free option. Um, and you're going to mix in some sh of Chef Floyd spices. Um, and then you're going to mix it and you're going to leave it overnight. Um, that's what I do, especially because I have a toddler. So if I'm making paneer, I'll always just literally sometimes at night, like at this time. So you guys are actually helping me. I'll chop up paneer or some meat. Um, he really likes paneer. So I think my little one is vegetarian <laughs> right now because he's refusing meat. Um, so I'll chop that up. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm going to like break my, I don't know if you saw the scene on the Kardashians with Kendall Jenner. She was trying to, <laughs> You can Google this. She was trying to like cut a cucumber and her mom was like, oh no, and she called the chef to cut the cucumber. I know I'm using the wrong knife, all that stuff, but I really like what Chef Floyd's wife, Barca says. Um, Barca says, there's no right or wrong way to cook. Um, there's no right, no right or wrong way to use these spices. You just use them, you just do whatever you want to do. And I love that explanation. Like, I love when she said that. Um, oh, love paneer. Mel said she loves paneer. Yay. Okay. Amazing. I'm so happy. If I can like give you the, an idea for an easy dish, this is it. My work is done. So I posted a recipe of this on our wheels. I'm just going to put all the paneer in here. Look at this. I put this can my dog have some raw paneer? Yeah, she can have some raw paneer, but I don't know where she went. 
She went downstairs. Hi, Chanel. It's so nice to see you. Chanel just joined everyone. She's amazing. A rock star can probably whip things up better, but again, there's no right or wrong way to cook. Um, so the one thing I would say is in the reel that I put up about the paneer masala, I didn't blend the coconut milk. Um, and it wasn't like, this is the Chaz full cream that we use for all our recipes. Basically you can get it, um, at specialty stores. You can mix any coconut cream, but I really just like this one. I'm going to actually blend this. I think blending the coconut cream is going to be a lot more creamier of a masala base. So I'm going to do that. And remember, you can do this with any meat, anything. Um, you're going to hear my blender go off in three, two, one, one second. Let's do this. Normally I would do this before, but I really, really wanted to do it during to show you how easy it is. I'll blend it. Okay, so all blended. Actually, coconut cream on my hands. And then what I'm gonna do is pour the coconut cream into the into my thing. Ooh, I love this coconut. So I pour it in, and now I've got my coconut cream. I've got some paneer. So you can you can call this your meat, your protein, and in my case it's paneer. In your case, it can be chicken, it can be tofu, it can be anything you want to. So for coconut, I'm gonna read you the goan masala. I actually would do cha masala too. The Goan Masala is turmeric, black pepper, cumin, cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. Every Goan family, which is a family living on a coast, <laughs> has a blend of spices they use for everyday cooking. This was Floyd's. When our sons were young, we decided to leave out fresh chili peppers to cook milder curries of shrimp, chicken, and vegetables. Adding coconut milk makes this earthy curry creamy and full-bodied barca. That's his wife writing the explanation. Wow, I've never I read that before, but not with that. Um, and Chanel, for those who are joining, these are Chef Floyd's um, spices who passed away, uh, unfortunately, in 2020. And this is like his legacy of all of his recipes. So the Goan Masala is almost finished. <laughs> that is what it looks like. So I put in quite a bit. And... I'm gonna put in, now I could just, the world is my oyster. I'm gonna even put in some chaat masala. Chaat is what we usually use on um, salads and stuff like that, but she says that it's the perfect um, finish to fresh fruit, crunchy veggies, grain-based salads and chaat, but I like, mm, maybe then I won't use chaat. I will use garlic. So I'm gonna put in Again, you should use a spoon, but I'm, for the purposes of this, I'm being a little bit lazy. I'm going to put in a little bit of silk chili. Oh, you guys, this is gonna turn out so good. And then if I wanna add in more blends, I would probably put in, ooh, I don't wanna mix the green tikka masala, but I'll definitely put in the gourmet masala. A little bit of the garum. Oh, this is gonna be so good tomorrow. And I would actually even marinate this for like two days because why not? And then what you do is you literally just mix. I'm so sorry, I'm trying to find the spatula. You didn't have to hear all that. <laughs> But I was trying to find my spatula. So all I do is I mix in literally everything. I mix it. I make sure that the spices get everywhere. You're probably going to want some salt. So I put in some salt. This is so good. I'll put in a little bit of, actually I'll put in origin vanilla salt. Because it's a little bit sweet. 
So I'll put in the, our origin vanilla salt. We love our salt. And I mix that up. And you guys, on a full live in front of you, I just made a dish. So th again, this could have been a protein, any protein, coconut cream or yogurt, um, some of Chef um, Floyd's spices. Um, and then you just put it, you could use the vindaloo if you like spicy and make sure all the protein is covered. And then I'm just gonna put a plate on this. I probably would have preferred an airtight container, but I don't have that right now. And I like to uh, put it right in the baking dish. And so I'll put a plate on it. And that's that. And that just goes in the fridge. That is going to be good for tomorrow. Like how amazing. There's no room in this fridge. <laughs> Where will I put this? I will put this right on top. Um, a, a, a good recipe is also if you add some veggies to it. So last time, if you go and look at my reel, all this is typed up. My last reel, I added zucchini, but a very popular uh, dish is mutter paneer, which is peas and paneer. So you could definitely add peas. Um, can you blend the spices of the milk? Okay, so Chanel, I just thought of that. That is a great idea. I actually could have blended the spices in the coconut milk. I feel like that would have made it even like more evenly spread and beautiful and delicious. So that is a great, great tip. Thank you, Chanel. That would have been really, really nice. Um, yeah, so that's Chef Floyd's spices. Um, can't speak enough of them. And when you get spices, one second, I'm just gonna put this. Sorry, that was loud. Mm. My poor son is probably upstairs, like awake. Um, but what I what I always say is one thing I've learned is use your spices. Um, you know, the burlap and barrel team gave us a good tip that the farmers, one of the farmers keeps their spices right next to the oven. Uh, sorry, right next to the gas stove, because then they use them. They're not in a pantry somewhere. Um, you know, like I know they say store in a cool, dark place, but you also use your spices. Like they bloom, they're delicious. Um, and then the other tip they gave was always to bloom them. So like stir fry them in a little bit of oil um, and that blooms the spices. Hi, Greg. Uh, okay, so our next up. Wow, we've done so much. We are at 10 o'clock. We started at 9.10, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, I think we actually started at 9.05, so I hope Instagram doesn't cut us off, but let's keep going. Um, I'm going to show you two spices that are one of the spices that um, we sell a lot of is the black wine, um, and then another one is cured sumac. So Lucy, you can have some little paneer, sweet. It's right there. She's having a little come here. Um, this is something that I really like with avocado. Please be ripe. Please be ripe. Do you ever cut an avocado and think, please just be ripe this one time? Okay. Yo. I do say yo, but yo. <laughs> like, how? Like, I'm lucky. That's good luck. You guys are good luck. It's a little unripe, but that's okay. So I really want to talk to you about the black lime, especially for summer. These are the summer spices. So black lime, um, a gra ground black lime is grown on a family farm in Guatemala where ripe limes are dried in the sun until they oxidize, turning black and savory. A versatile ingredient common in Persian cooking. It's great on roasted meat or vegetables in stews or anywhere you use lime juice. The sumac is ancient preservation technique, packing fresh sumac berries and salt Classic Middle Eastern finishing spice, swap it for lemon juice in any recipe to add character and brightness to salads, fish, meat, or dips. These are amazing. Like the black lime, and I'm always surprised by it because we sell a lot of the black lime. Um, I'll show you. Oh my, look at that. So I put it on the avocado, and then the sumac is kind of like a berry color. A little bit thicker so sometimes you have to break it up but that's what the sumac looks like i just dropped a bunch and the black lime tastes like lime 
like especially like on a margarita this would be such a good rim you can't go wrong now i would definitely add some salt so because the black lime doesn't have salt in it so i would definitely put on some salt oh this is so good this is perfect to enjoy towards the middle of the live but yeah like the black lime i take a lot of it um i put it in salad dressings both of these i've put in interchangeably in salad dressings um i have put them as a cocktail that i've made for me and brian at home um which i've made once usually he's the one who makes the cocktails because why not um but this is what it looks like so some salt some black lime if you're hungry mm. I'll put on avocado toast. This is so good, you guys. It literally tastes like lime. Like, it is delicious. Mm. Why have I never done the black lime on avocado? I don't know. Mm. It is like the perfect millennial. And Greg, I think you're a millennial. I think I'm a millennial. It's early 80s millennial. Uh, I think we're millennials. So basically, this is like your perfect avocado toast. Sumac, also amazing. Like you guys, I could stop eating this, but I'm not going to because this is the perfect break and I deserve me some avocado. Mm. The sumac, it kind of tastes almost like a little fruity and tart. Like these would be really good for summer cocktails. But so good. Mm. I've had the black lime on white fish. Amazing. Like, amazing. 1980, I'm right on the line with Gen X. I think I'm on the line too um, with Gen X. So I don't know who's cooler, Gen X or, or millennials <laughs> or baby boomers. My favorite on avocado is Cobanero chili. Yeah. I haven't even tried that. All right, we're gonna try that. So Chanel says her favorite is Cobanero chili, so should, do I dare try that again? Probably, okay. <laughs> just for you, just for Chanel, I'm going to do it. Ooh, ooh, okay. So you guys saw it here. Got my avocado, I'm gonna put on some Cobanero chili. Okay, that's too much. I will eat it. All for you. Chanel, this is for you. Okay. Um, and I definitely needed some salt to cut it. Uh, wow. wow. Um, I usually go with Redmond salt on them. But I'm going to change up. Yes, definitely red and salt. Speaking of which, we can move to the salts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that gives you a good overview of all of the burlap spices. The black lime sounds very interesting. I might have to try it. I'm excited for you to try it. Um, and the only ones, the other ones I pulled out just to show you that I cook with very often. And when I say I cook, I use that word. I use those words loosely. <laughs> Brian loves these spices. Like every time, um, our entire pantry is just so happy about them. So there's two, there's actually four spices I wanted to tell you about. One is for, so this is barbecue season, um, the smoked paprika and the sweet paprika. So Brian, Brian really, really loves these. Um, here's the smoked paprika. That's what it looks like. My hand is a little bit shaky. Um, it's very smoky. So like when you open it, you know the Lay's bag of barbecue chips? That's what I smell, like it's super, it's like smoked barbecue. Um, so Amber, one of our customers, yeah, it's, oh, Chanel says it's the best smoked paprika I've ever had. Yay, I'm so glad you like it. Um, it is, yeah, like deep, even the description, you guys, deeply smoky and sweet, smoked pimentin adds depth and complexity to each dish add it to pasta sauces or chili, use the rub for grilled or roasted meats or sprinkle over sauteed veggies. So one of our customers, Amber, said it was too smoked. 
So we launched, we went back to Burlap with that feedback and they told us that some of the customers mix it. So like two parts smoked and one part sweet. And this is the sweet paprika, I'll open it. And it smells, it smells a lot more just paprika-y. It's not like obviously it doesn't have sugar, but it's delicious, like wow. So that was a really great tip, which is if you like barbecue, try to get the smoked paprika and the sweet and then that way you can mix them and then the two other spices i'd like to highlight these are the ones i use a lot um if you just want like stir fry barbecue which i know greg does all the time and you like cumin cumin this is the wild mountain cumin it is one of it is the one that they launched with um i believe this is from afghanistan um which you know i can i pronounce it afghanistan which um you know, some people say Afghanistan <laughs> and it's Afghanistan um, and this, that region, that, that country, like the wild mountain cumin is from Afghanistan. And I know that because um, during when they, and when everybody pulled out, Burlap and Merrill sent out an email that they had lost their supplier. They like, were trying to support their supplier and they weren't able to source it, um, which was really hard. Um, so they, I believe now it was back, their suppliers back and they're able to ship out to Afghanistan again. And um, the founder, Ethan, his father-in-law is, his wife is Afghanistan, from Afghanistan, he works in Afghanistan, that's how he, uh, I just think this is so good. If you like cumin, if you toast this in just like butter, coconut oil, or anything, the flavor blooms and it comes out like anything. Hi, Rachel. Um, and this is like, so if you like cumin, and also cumin's really um, good in taco seasoning, so definitely the wild mountain cumin is a go-to. And then the other one I wanted to highlight is the turmeric. Like if you're not a turmeric fan, <laughs> turmeric is amazing for inflammation, like especially heated and with a little bit of black pepper. Um, for all my turmeric fans, this is the best turmeric I've ever had. It is like bright yellow. It smells effing amazing. Like it's so good. Um, and I often just mix, like if I'm just want to keep it simple, I'm mixing some cumin, garlic, and uh, turmeric. And it just, and obviously a little hint of black pepper to activate the turmeric. Um, I've had a lot of inflammation after COVID, so I try to take turmeric every day, a little bit in my food. Um, but yes, that is the overview of burlap. And I'll show you a couple of, uh, I'll show you a couple of screen share. I'm going to show you a couple of um oh that disabled my camera i'm going to show you if i can screen share a couple of our recipes that i pulled up so ooh, this looks um ooh, this does not look good there you go so i'll turn the camera so you can see it these are this is what a customer told me they made in our Oh, look at my ring light. <laughs> this is what a customer told me they made. Um, this is a low carb keto friendly taco casserole, which all it really means is it is, it's grain free and sugar free. And you can see it's got the, it's got the ground beef, yellow onion, bell pepper. It has abokiju chili miso, which we sell. The customer made it without that. Um, she made it with garlic, silk, chili, black lime, and paprika. This is a great, easy recipe. I've made this so easy. Um, and this is like a really good one for um, taco season. You can also make your own taco seasoning, which is what we have with burlap spices. So we've got, and you can just mix this up. So we've got silk chili, cumin, Vancouver Island flake sea salt, black lime, peppercorn, smoked paprika. So on this one, this was before we launched sweet paprika. There's a cobanero chili. I would literally put in more garlic. If you like garlic, I would add in um, the sweet paprika, you can mix the cobanero chili, but at least it gives you an idea of making your own taco seasoning with the switch uh, spices. Um, this one has been, we've been tagged in it quite a bit on Instagram, so I know people make it. Um, and then I have the keto chow chia pudding. So this is for all your sweet spices. Like if you ever feel like making, um, if you're tired of eating keto chow, if you've had it, it's a meal replacement. Um, I definitely would suggest making it into a chia pudding um, and you can add the cloud forest cardamom and you can also add royal cinnamon. Uh, it just gives it, look, look at that. It gives it such a good, um, 
texture and it's so it's so good like it's and i sprinkle the cinnamon on top i sprinkle the cardamom on top and it's just freaking delicious um and yeah and this is our whole spice collection so it's got the burlap and barrel spices we have the redmond um sea salt um we have all of our salts and then we also end with some of our bundles we have jasmine's kitchen um that's everything that i wanted to show you and i had let me stop sharing there we go let me try to find you again <laughs> hello i'm back okay so i'm back and i think that's we're getting to the end the other ones i wanted to highlight to you was just salts um i mean i don't think i need to say this in terms of salts but they're so 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 important and i used to I used to always think that we should only carry like one type of product on Switch um, in a category, but these are all different in their own way. Um, the Origin Vanilla Salt, one thing is if any of you practice um, fasting, that salt is extremely important, but I also just think like my mom uh, recently had COVID and she was low on electrolytes and felt dizzy, so I just think like electrolytes are for everybody. Um, which is why I would suggest like a high quality salt and adding high quality salt to your cooking. If you're like, I want spices, they intimidate me, or I just want the garlic, adding a good salt and garlic to your food. I just wink in the gun. This is what Brian always hates. He's like, nobody likes that, but I'm like, click, click. Um, but yes, adding a high quality salt to your food. So I have three salts. Um, one is the origin vanilla. Uh, you have not tried this. This is this has vanilla pods, like real vanilla pods and salt, which is, it smells absolutely delicious. Um, Bree's favorite, I'll read it to you. It is, um, she mixes it with burlap cinnamon, frothed joy nut milk, and sweet milk sweetener for the ultimate coffee. Um, and the salt, the vanilla bean salt gives a little bit of flavor with all the benefits of getting your daily sodium, sprinkle into brownies, iced coffees, and so much more. So. That's the origin vanilla salt, love origin vanilla. The same thing that Burlap Barrel does for spices, they do for vanilla beans. Um, the next up is Redmond. I mean, uh, Redmond, and I put the uh, kosher salt in here, and then this one is the fine salt, and we also have the coarse. Redmond is from Utah. Uh, founders literally focus on getting us the best salt. So. Uh, it literally, it's also the salt that is in Keto Child that we sell. You Like when you try Redmond, I think Greg always says um, all the time that um, he loves Redmond sea salt. Many people swear by it. And I would definitely replace salts. Like even if you don't buy Redmond, like find a high quality salt and there's a great place to um, invest your money. Um, especially like it's just the health benefits like the magnesium the trace minerals and the salts are going to go a long way in your body and your body will thank you so those are the redmond wheats uh salts and i like this like i like the explanation long before the earth's new pollution uh volcanic eruption sealed an ancient pristine ocean beneath a layer of protective ash in which it, what is now north america real salt is harvested from this ancient deposit near redmond utah we bring it to you exactly as nature created, unrefined, with a subtle, sweet flavor, unique and beyond compare. So that's a little bit about Redmond. Um, do you know, do you have any plans to carry some of the Redmond seasoned blends that already are more readily available in the States? Yes, um, we do. I, I think right now, Greg, the decision we need to decide is between the flavored electrolytes and then the, um, the flavored salts. So I think what I might do is send a newsletter out to people who like salts <laughs> and then ask them to pick and help us decide. Um, Greg says uh, he never understood it until he tried it, truly delicious. And Chanel says you can taste the difference for sure. My final product of the night is Vancouver Island, you guys. Vancouver Island Sea Salt, which is uh, a company that I met. Um, and when I talked to the founders, I was blown away. And they said that Canada has three coasts, yet it is known more for maple syrup than it is for salt. Um, you can taste Vancouver Island sea salt. It's sourced from the Pacific. Um, it's obviously a Vancouver Island company. And they have, we carry their flake salt, their fine salt, and then we have their whiskey salt. 
Uh, yeah, I said whiskey salt. So I'll show you what they look like. This is what it looks like. Like these are, Brie always calls them diamonds because they actually look like diamonds. Um, that, like again, a margarita rim, a rim for a drink, but more than that, like putting that on a steak, putting that on veggies, topping like your broccoli with it. Like it sounds so crazy, but it's so good. Um, and then Megan Ramos, who um, is, I believe, part founder, co-founder of the fasting method. One of the things she does for electrolytes, which has helped me, I actually carry the flakes sea salt in my purse. She takes a couple of salt flakes and puts them under her tongue. Mm -hmm. So good. And she always says this to start this in the morning, like don't wait till later in the day to take electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And I just like love the taste of it. It's actually really, really, really good. Like it's not super strong. This micro batch Vancouver Island sea salt is smoked using aged single malt whiskey barrels from our neighbors at Shelter Point Distillery. The oak imparts a deep smoky flavor with a hint of sweetness and vanilla notes that this award-winning whiskey is known for. Great on grilled meats, veggie bowls, tofu dishes, and as a cocktail rim. Salt love. Like, can you believe this is from um, hand harvested, roasted in British Columbia, Canadian sea salt, and single malt whiskey barrel smoke. That's the ingredients. Like, just amazing. <laughs> Have the coffee salt by them. Yes, we carry their coffee salt, which is what I actually took to work today. Um, and that's what I was using for my electrolytes, like just, um, just under my tongue. So, well, hopefully you like all of that. Um, we have for the, for this week and next week, because it's summer, it's we're we're going to have, I believe 10% off on all spices and salts until next Friday. Um, but there's no, like, you can also like just not buy it and then buy some of the bundles because you, that you get that discount. But this is a great way if you're placing an order with Switch to try some of the spices. Um, and then uh, I just hope that like you get the same pleasure from the spices. If you have spices, like quality spices in your cup and your pantry, whether they're from Switch or not, take them out, use them, enjoy them, enjoy the taste. Um, I think you're gonna love them. Just like I love all these spices. And our next week's show, I wanted to announce what we'll be doing. I made a new reel about frozen yogurt bark, which is trending. And you're going to be like, what are you talking about? But frozen yogurt bark is trending on TikTok. It's trending on reels. It is so good. And I'm going to be making it for you. So I'll have a finished one to show you. And I'm going to be making it for you, with you. Um, I'm going to have frozen yogurt. I'm going to have... Um, keto chow, any uh, one of the flavors. Personally, I like vanilla, and I'm going to have some pilly nuts. I'm going to have some Coca Polo chocolate chips. Um, it is going to be an epic show. I posted it, um, the video, in our Facebook group, and um, everyone was like, give me the recipe, give me the recipe, give me the recipe. So I think that just decides our next show. And I'm really excited because my toddler loves the yogurt bark. I love the yogurt bark. Like, if I'm not hungry, Sometimes I'll just eat, actually eat that for dinner because I'm just like, this is keto chow in it. Like, it's good. It's really good. So tune in next Tuesday. And I'll see you next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Well, I'll see you in the middle of the week. But thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. I love you. Um, and it, this was, it's always wonderful spending Tuesday night with you. Bye. I'll let you go. Bye. <laughs>